Today we'll be simulating realistic rivers, oceans, and even waterfalls. These are features that took millions of years to form on Earth, and we'll be recreating them in seconds on completely random planets. And the first step is making the water itself look realistic by splitting up the planet into two parts. One with all the terrain, and one which is just water. That lets us reveal underwater terrain that was hidden before. And suddenly we can see these hidden trenches that look like mountains turned inside out. When we layer these two objects on top of each other, we get some really nice beaches. And we can just make the water layer transparent to still see the terrain. But right now the water is just one color, so I grabbed this beautiful water shader from the U at the asset store. It wasn't exactly meant for random planets, but after messing with the options for a couple hours, I got something that looks pretty nice. It's still missing some waves though, but thankfully the water asset I got also has a plugin for that. Well, sh one hour later. Okay, that's gonna have to do the job for now, but everything breaks when we go underwater. We'll fix it by adding some fog and tinting everything blue whenever the camera is underwater. So let's see how that looks. Oh! That's looking way better. And since I've already got the fog working, I also added some atmospheric fade so that distant mountains gradually disappear. Okay, now we're finally ready to make some rivers. We'll start by laying out the general shape of our river using splines, which are like the 3D equivalent of Photoshop's pen tool and this makes sure our river follows a nice smooth path without any sharp edges. Now we want to carve out some of the terrain to make a passage for our river to flow through, and to do that we will need to use some mass. Mass, 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 mass. But don't worry, nothing too complicated. To find the distance between two points in 3D space, so we square each coordinate and sum them up. If we now set the right side to some value, like 3, it will give the set of all points that are that far away from the center which is just a ball with radius 3. We can now scale the vertical axis up and down, and when we cut off everything above ground level, we're left with a valley. The basic shape our river will flow through. We can even change how fast the height drops by adjusting the power of the z-coordinate. And this will allow us to create different river profiles. Finally, we just rearrange the equation to solve for z, giving us the exact height of the terrain at every point near the river. Let's try that on our planet. We'll increase the radius, but keep it relatively shallow. The problem is that we are only carving out the ground under the turning points, when instead we should do it all along the river path. We can just increase the number of samples until we have a smooth riverbed. All that's left is to fill it up with water and we have a nice river. Now, you may notice that this isn't exactly realistic. It definitely isn't random and okay, at least it's a river. But don't worry, I didn't lie in the intro. We are now going to accurately generate rivers that actually wind down mountains and join together to create beautiful river networks. So let's take a deeper look at how rivers actually form. Every river, no matter how massive, starts as a tiny stream, usually up in the mountains, and flows downhill until it reaches the sea, always following the steepest downward paths. But in our simulation, that's not always enough. What if the river reaches a valley where every nearby point is still above sea level? It gets stuck. On Earth, the rivers themselves cause the seas to form, but since we are generating seas and lakes first, we need to make sure that rivers actually end up where they are supposed to. We'll achieve that by first spawning the river mouth, which is the end of the river, and then using that as a hint direction for where the river should go. But we can't just spawn a mouth wherever there is water, otherwise we will get absurd results, like a massive river draining into a tiny pond. So, we only take into account chunks which are mostly water and spawn the river endings at the coasts. There we go, now we have some natural river endings and I even added an additional check of the points right around the mouth to make sure that we don't run into the pond issue. Now that we have some natural looking river endings, we can calculate what's called a drainage basin. That's just the region where all rivers flow into the same mouth. Here I have assigned the basins just based on the closest mouths. But there is a problem with this. The basins should be split by mountains, since rainfall that falls on opposite sides of a mountain cannot end up in the same river. Fortunately, we already solved this in the last video. Our tectonic plate simulation creates mountains, so we can simply prioritize river mouths that are on the same plate. The mountains now act like walls, naturally splitting up the basins. A river won't always be able to get to its preferred mouth, like in the case of the brown basin here but that won't be a problem. As soon as we enter the white basin, we will just start moving towards its river mouth. 
Now we can spawn some river sources up in the mountains and all that's left to do is connect them to the mouths, which is harder than it sounds. But first, if you want to gain a deeper understanding of the functions I showed in this video, you can do so using Brilliant, the sponsor of today's video. Brilliant is a learning platform with thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, and programming. Their course on functions teaches you everything you need to know about curves, gradients, and intersections. The kinds of things I rely on when building my simulations. What I like most is how Brilliant uses a hands-on approach to help you grasp complex topics at your own pace. You'll get to develop your mathematical intuition and fluency with visuals that bring core concepts to life. Whether you want to sharpen your logic through Brilliant's programming courses or start learning how to derive your own equations for simulations like this, Brilliant makes the process feel natural and rewarding. You can try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days by visiting brilliant.org forward slash devote, clicking the link in the description or scanning the QR code on screen. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to generating some rivers. To take our river from start to finish, we have to keep track of position, width, depth, and speed for every single point along the river. That's expensive to store and hard to calculate. But thankfully, we can simplify the problem a lot using graph theory. This is just a way of representing things as nodes and joining them up with edges if they are connected in some way. This can be anything from connecting students to which university courses they're attending to the entire internet, which is just one big graph. In our case, we can create a node every, say, 100 meters and connect them up. We then assign the position, width, and depth to each node. The splines will make sure that the path between the nodes is smooth, and we can just blend the other attributes smoothly from one node to the next. But how do we know where to put these nodes? We start from a source node at the top of a mountain and check its neighbors. At the beginning, the goal is simple. Go down as fast as possible. So we just pick the lowest neighbor and keep going. Once we reach flatter ground, we start factoring in the direction of the best river mouth. We also increase the sampling radius as the river flattens out, since rivers take longer to turn on straighter regions. When we finally reach the mouth, the full river path is complete. So, if the river starts off as a tiny stream, where does all this water come from? There are two main ways in which a river grows in size, and the first is by collecting all neighboring rainfall through the ground. We can simulate this by just setting the total water level of each node to the previous one plus the precipitation value of its position, which measures their amount of rainfall. The other way that the river grows is through another river merging into it. Massive rivers like the Amazon have thousands of these tributaries. We simulate it by checking if any point from another river is close enough. If so, we just merge the two graphs. And here we have that. If I disable the planet, you'll see the full river graph. And honestly, this looks amazing. We essentially simulated rain falling all over the world. Every raindrop finds the fastest route downhill. Those paths merge into streams and then rivers. Now we can just drop the spline points along each node and spawn the water. And now that we've got a realistic river system, we can add some of the terrain features that rivers cause. So I made a poll to ask you guys what you would like to see and river deltas won by far, but waterfalls and canyons tied for second. So I will just make all three of them. Starting with the canyons, which form when a river cuts into terrain being lifted by tectonic activity. I will simulate this by giving the river a small chance of passing through a younger mountain. And here you can see a nice waterfall. Finally, deltas are these interesting island formations that sometimes form at the end of the river. And I've simulated that by giving the river a small chance of splitting near the end. In the next episode of this six-part series, we'll be improving the graphics and adding trees, rocks, and other decorations, so subscribe so you don't miss it. If you want to help shape future videos, from now on I will run polls over on my Patreon, which I just launched. These videos take months to make, and I want to keep them free. So if you want to support that and get some cool perks like early builds of the planet generator, check out the link below. But until I finish the public river update, the last version is free on itch.io. That's also in the description.